Hello and welcome to another edition of our Women in STEM series. My name is Kaylee Peel and I'm the Director of Development for the Linda Hall Library. Today our guest is Danielle Binion. She's the Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion at KU Medical Center. Danielle, welcome and thanks for being here. Thank you, Kaylee. So to get the conversation going, would you mind giving an overview of your career journey in the Kansas City community? Sure, so I moved to Kansas City from St. Louis in 2011, um, and I was just across the parking lot at UMKC leading diversity initiatives um, at the School of Law. That was a career change for me. Um, prior to that, I was in the sciences, so I have a biology degree, mm -hmm. and I did some work in public health as well as with the Red Cross. Um, so very lab-focused, um, compliance-driven, doing inspections. I like to call myself the Deliver Us from Eva movie um, lady who was in doing um, inspections. And so then I shifted to higher education. Um, I had spent some time while I was in college doing admissions work, so that felt really natural to me. And I was really passionate about getting um, people who are living in the margins into law school and into other STEM opportunities. Um, so I did that work and started volunteering for an organization named Prep KC here mm -hmm. in Kansas City while I was working at the law school. And I would bring law students with me. I was signing up for so many events that they said, um, you're always here, do you wanna work with us? And I said, oh, nonprofit. Okay, let me see um, what this is about because I'm really passionate about the work here. And that led to an eight year career there at Prep KC creating STEAM and STEM opportunities for students in high school. So designing career academies, um, which provided students an opportunity to get real world learning. So whether it was college credits, real world experiences, internships, summer opportunities, some even here at the UMKC campus close to Linda Hall. Um, and did that work for eight years. And very proud of that work and now I am the Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion at KU Medical Center, which also felt natural but a little scary. Mm -hmm. It was a career transition during the pandemic mm -hmm. um, and so it was a time where a lot of my students had started to graduate, we were all virtual and it felt like a good place to pass the baton of work um, at Prep KC and follow my students as they enter uh, colleges like KU and like KU Medical Center. So I've been really excited and blessed to see my students roam in the halls and coming to my office for continued mentorship and support and advocacy. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, I love that you've had a lot of different experiences that have led you to where you are. I think it's important for young people to understand that your portfolio can look a little bit more diverse, right? You can mm -hmm. have different experiences, and in fact, that'll help you and aid you. You have more kind of tools on your tool belt. So that's great. Um, Prep KC is a partner of ours. We work with their connector um, for our How Do I Become series. Because um, the library is really trying to focus more on how can we uplift the organizations who are, who are doing great work here. How, instead of reinventing the wheel, how can we support you know STEM and STEAM education, um, the workforce development, that talent pipeline mm -hmm. that so mm -hmm. many companies are looking for. Um, we're kind of in that wheelhouse um, now too. Um, can you talk about you know what's happening in the Kansas City kind of network from the KU Med perspective when you're working with those students that you had from Prep KC, you're now seeing them at KU Med. What is that experience like? What are the things that you're seeing, the initiatives, I guess, that are happening that you're really excited about for them? Well, when I see them, I'm excited. I'm not even surprised, mm -hmm. right? Because the work we led was preparing them to be successful in these environments and mm -hmm. workplace and in higher ed. So when I see them, I feel a little bit validated that some of the blood, sweat, and tears that went into building those academies uh, really paved the way for students. Um, and then at KU Medical Center, in addition to scholarship opportunities, we have affinity groups where we're supporting people within uh, diverse intersectionalities. Um, we have a first gen initiative as well. So it's our first gen project where we're focused on highlighting the stories and lived experiences of people who are first generation college goers. And not just in the learner category, but employees, so faculty and staff as well and bringing them all together to say, okay, this might be where you're starting your journey here at KU Medical Center, but here's where it can lead to, and here's a network that will support you along the way, because there are just things you don't know when you're entering those sorts of spaces as the first person in your family. Mm -hmm. So that's a really important initiative for us. We're partnering with Prep KC on that as well, and so we'll be bringing a group of high school students, about 80 of them, 
to KU Medical Center on October 17th, and this will be our second year doing this. But it's a Discover KU day where they can explore School of Nursing, School of Medicine, School of Health Professions all together and get support from our current students. But then our current students in that network are also getting mentorship mm -hmm. across the peer group within students and learners, um, but also from faculty and staff who are first in. So in that project, we're doing a series of stories and video highlights, similar to what we're doing today, mm -hmm. sitting and talking about experiences and sharing that out on our social media so people know that they're not alone. So building sense of community. Um, we're also doing and leading a lot of education in implicit bias mm -hmm. and unconscious bias so that we can um, inform curriculum, inform medical and clinical and nursing health profession mm -hmm. practice so that we can meet people where they are and all understand each other better. No, that's fantastic. Um, I'm excited about the event coming up in October. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, when it comes to, you've, you've talked a little bit about, you know, the the challenge when it comes to kind of first-gen students and connecting them to mentors. Are there other challenges that you're seeing as you're building up these networks and these affinity groups in the Kansas City community? Yeah, I think there are always opportunities, and I see mm -hmm. challenges as opportunities. Um, so yeah. in our space, we see an opportunity to support not just first-gen um, learners, staff, and faculty, but also to support our veterans on our campuses mm -hmm. with um, more and improved programming. Um, and also support those living with diverse abilities. And um, we use that as a coined phrase that we've learned in the community, but it's celebrating and uplifting and advocating for those who are living with a disability. So we've been adding more programming so that we can understand the needs and opportunities to serve communities better. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, and that's, I think more, more of us need to um, kind of take that on. <laughs> Diverse abilities. It's all of our work, it's right? It's all of our work, absolutely. It's very important. Um, so what are some other things that, what are, you know, as you being the director of DEI for KU Med, um, you're working on these great initiatives. What is kind of a, a big shiny goal that you're excited to work toward in the next couple of years? That's a really great question. Um, my personal goal is to make sure that everyone is seen and heard. Mm -hmm. So even today, before I got here, we had a morning blessing led by a native and indigenous um, graduate student from oh. KU who came to the medical center along with Lori Hasselman who leads um, Native American success um, programming at KU. And this was an opportunity for us to gather in a space and celebrate indi indigeneity. Yeah. So this was a time for us to come together and celebrate indigeneity. Um, and when we did this uh, morning blessing this morning, we saw folks come across the atrium. It was in a in the School of Nursing building that kind of looks like a mall, so there's like <laughs> banisters and people can look over. People were coming from everywhere, just looking over. They hadn't registered. They weren't, um, you know, expecting to participate, but they did. They joined in. So my personal goal is for more of that to occur um, naturally and organically where people are seen and heard and celebrated. Um, professionally, we are excited about expanding DEI opportunities across all three of our KU Medical Center campuses, so in Kansas City, Salina, and Wichita. Mm -hmm. And our office just launched the Center for African American Health oh. on Juneteenth. Okay. Um, and we newly installed a new director, and that work will be done in Sedgwick County and Wyandotte County. So I'm really excited over the next three to five years to see that center grow and serve the community. That's fabulous. And congratulations. You've so so many. Excited. You have so a lot excited. of good news. That's <laughs> all good news to share. That's amazing. So the library, obviously, you know, I mentioned the career exploration, the education that we're working on. We're also really dedicated to uplifting the works of women in STEM and STEAM and also people of color that highlight, you know, past discoveries. They celebrate current wins, but we're also helping to help shape the future pioneers that we have in our community. So from your point of view, what do you think the future of women in STEAM, um, people of color in STEAM, what does that look like for our community? Well, I hope it looks like equity in pay, mm -hmm. equity in opportunity. Um, we talk about glass ceilings a lot, but I would like to see more women at C-suite level, um, and not just in uh, leadership over DEI, but as CFOs, mm -hmm. as CEOs. Um, and for that number to be uh, not a minority number, but maybe even a majority, if not equal, um, percentages. Also, just to see more opportunities for families, um, women in the communities that I've talked to at KU Medical Center and beyond, 
um, really care about their families, spending time with their families, and having balance in the workplace. Um, so I think our benefits and um, everything that we wrap around um, inviting folks into our space matches that. Mm -hmm. So in terms of child care, in terms of fertility and growing your family, in terms of time off, in terms of parental uh, leave and maternity leave. So I like to see expanded opportunities in all of those spaces for yeah. our communities. Absolutely, me too. Well, thank you, Danielle, for your time. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Yeah.